When Woman is Boss An Interview with Nikola Tesla by John B. Kennedy Kalia's Magazine, January 30th, 1926 The life of the bee will be the life of our race, says Nikola Tesla, world-famed scientist. A new sex order is coming, with the female as superior. You will communicate instantly by simple vest pocket equipment. Aircraft will travel the skies unmanned, driven and guided by radio. Enormous power will be transmitted great distances without wires. Earthquakes will become more and more frequent. Temperate zones will turn frigid or torrid. And some of these awe-inspiring developments, says Tesla, are not so very far off. At 68 years of age, Nikola Tesla sits quietly in his study, reviewing the world that he has helped to change, foreseeing other changes that might come in the onward stride of the human race. He is a tall, thin, eccentric man who wears somber clothes and looks out at life with steady, deep set eyes. In the midst of luxury, he lives meagerly, selecting his diet with a precision almost extreme. He is an engineer, an inventor, and above these, as well as basic to them, a philosopher. And despite his obsession with the practical application of what a gifted mind may learn in books, he has never removed his gaze from the drama of life. This world, amazed many times during the last throbbing century, will rub its eyes and stand breathless before greater wonders than even of the past few generations have seen. And 50 years from now, the world will differ more from the present day than our world now differs from the world of 50 years ago. Nikola Tesla came to America in early manhood and his inventive genius found quick recognition. When fortune was his through his revolutionary power transmission machines, he established plants, first in New York, then Colorado, later on Long Island, where his innumerable experiments resulted in all manner of important and minor advances in electrical science. Lord Kelvin said of him, before he was 40, that he had contributed more than any other man to the study of electricity. From the inception of the wireless system, he says, I saw that this new art of applied electricity would be of greater benefit to the human race than any other scientific discovery, for it virtually illuminates distance. The majority of the ills from which humanity suffers are due to the immense extent of the terrestrial globe and the inability of individuals and nations to come into close contact. Wireless will achieve the closer contact through transmission of intelligence, transport of our bodies and materials, and conveyance of energy. When wireless is perfectly applied, the whole earth will be converted into a huge brain which in fact it is, all things being particles of a real and rhythmic whole, we shall be able to communicate with one another instantly, irrespective of distance. Mr. Tesla regards the emergence of woman as one of the most profound portents for the future. It is clear to any trained observer, he says, and even to the sociologically untrained, that the new attitude towards sex discrimination has come over the world through the centuries receiving an abrupt stimulus just before and after the world war. This struggle of the human female towards sex equality will end in a new sex order with the female as superior. The modern woman who anticipates in merely superficial phenomena, the advancement of her sex is but a surface symptom of something deeper and more potent, fermenting in the bosom of the race. It is not in the shallow physical imitation of men that woman will assert first their quality and later their superiority, but in the awakening of the intellect of woman. Through countless generations, from the very beginning, the social subservience of woman resulted naturally in the partial atrophy, or at least the hereditary suspension of mental qualities, which we now know the female sex to be endowed with no less than men. The queen is the center of life, but the female mind 
has demonstrated a capacity for all the mental acquirements and achievements of men, and as generations ensure that capacity will be expanded, the average woman will be well educated as the average man, and then better educated, for the dormant faculties of her brain will be stimulated to an activity that will be all the more intense and powerful because of centuries of repose. Women will ignore precedent and startle civilization with their progress. The acquisition of new fields of endeavor by women, their gradual usurpation of leadership, will dull and finally dissipate. Feminine sensibilities will choke the maternal instinct so that marriage and motherhood may become abhorrent and human civilization draw closer and closer to the perfect civilization of the bee. The significance of this lies in the principle dominating the economy of the bee, the most highly organized and intelligently coordinated system of any form of non-rational animal life. The all-governing supremacy of the instinct for immortality which makes divinity out of motherhood. The center of all bee life is the queen. She dominates the hive, not through hereditary right, for any egg may be hatched into a reigning queen, but because she is the womb of this insect race. We can only sit and wonder. 